This episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, Bennett and Mike are talking about Guardian Angels. Like Overwatch, not the other type of Guardian Angel. Like Overwatch, being in Guardian Angel, or not necessarily always Overwatch. Because a Guardian Angel is like the one person who's armed. You know what I mean? I do. So you're traveling, were you ever the guy who held the rounds? You know what I'm talking about? There's like one guy at the front, one guy at the back who's condition one or whatever, depending. I was never that guy. Really? I just wasn't. I was just never called on for that. I mean, I'd played guardian angel role in other scenarios. I mean, I do it right now. I mean, I walk around with a pistol wherever I go. You know, I'm still playing guardian angel, I guess. In a roundabout way, I guess, yeah. Right. Yeah, man, you know what I'm talking about. It's one of those things where it's like we're all armed and we all have a mag in our pocket. And there's like one guy who's conditioned one somewhere and another guy who's conditioned one somewhere. Right. I was never that guy. I've been like Overwatch, you know, and 99.999% of the time, nothing happens when you're on Overwatch. Of course. Which is good. Right. Uh, every once in a while, you just so happen to be behind a sasser over some Hesco barriers, standing on a cot, smoking people. But that only happens like 0.0001% of the time. Which it could be fun. It's good right. times. Yeah, but it's like it's a topic that I personally wanted to bring up because it's I think that we inadvertently wind up playing that role now also. I mean, I definitely do. Are you not paying attention to the exits whenever you walk in? You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's just kind of one of those things that's you're built that way to an extent, right. you know? Well, and I mean, and as a as a force protection tactic, I mean, the military's got it down pretty good, uh, considering, you know, well, it's difficult in places though. Like you guys had to have had, you know, not not necessarily, but I mean, I know you did sniper stuff in Ramadi. Yes. You probably had Overwatch all over the place that you didn't even know was there necessarily. Yes. <clears throat> would you Would you agree? Yeah. Well, I mean, you probably knew where it was. I mean, you knew that they were there, but uh, I mean, that's kind of the whole point. Um, yeah. You know, kind of who's got your back. You you would kind of need it. Um, yeah. And the other thing, too, is that it's like, it, you know, uh, we did have to deal with a great big sniper threat out in Ramadi. But the other thing is Overwatch doesn't always necessarily need to be a precision weapons asset. No, also. no, 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 no. Absolutely not. I mean, how many times I've. I remember seeing like Bradleys and other fighting vehicles and stuff in Overwatch. Right. That, that makes your balls feel a lot bigger. Yeah, hell yes. Especially um, when they're yeah. in defilade and the enemy doesn't know. Right. Yeah, or knowing that you have like air assets, yeah. um, you know, like attack helicopters. And uh, dude, I'll tell you what, like <laughs> I remember running um, uh, missions and stuff where you – you know those little OH-58 Delta, the Kiowa gunship? Yes. Helicopters, the Army ones? Dude, a lot of people don't give those freaking little bastards credit. Those fuckers, man. <laughs> Next thing you know, you've got them popping above the tree line, laying like, you know, precision 50 cal fire down, you know, <laughs> and crazy shit like that. It's freaking badass. Right. Um, you know, or... You know, having like a having like a freaking laugh twenty five with like a bushmaster on top. Yes, you're feeling pretty good rolling in, knowing that if the shit goes down, you're freaking right. It's like the Cyber Cell song. When the shit goes down, you better be ready. You know, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. There are a lot of guys who used to talk shit about Bradleys, but uh, I'm a big fan of them. 
Yes. And, they, but I got to say, you guys are fucking RPG magnets. But... They are. RPG magnets, right? <laughs> oh, dude. They really are. I dude, mean, there's no doubt. They're a brick. Why, right. That's one of the reasons that they exist, though. Uh, oh, and that's why infantry, or as they would like to call them, crunchies, are, uh, are you know, that's one of their biggest friends because when they roll into the AO, that's usually the enemy's, right, you know, right. that's their attention is on them. What I think what is I, funny is the perception that other people have as far as you, you had this lone wolf mentality where a single vehicle or maybe a couple of vehicles are rolling around, but because they're vehicles, the enemy fears them. Like that is not at all the case. No. You know, and so more often than not, I mean, they're relying on scouts and other ground assets because it's multiple eyes and multiple guns that are out on the ground. But also, you can play Guardian Angel to a Bradley. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, considering I mean, it's basic military tactics, man. Right. Gain the fucking high ground, and that's your Overwatch position, and you can provide effective covering fire for advancing forces. Um, you know, I mean, shit. They've been doing it since time began, at least with once uh, freaking we saw, especially with like cannonade and and cannon fire and stuff like that. Right. Those positions, the that that term, I don't think it really entered military doctrine until the fifties. The actual word Overwatch. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, they've been using it since freaking hell, you know, forever. Right. Um, and and somebody in Overwatch can be Guardian. Let's see, I look at Guardian Angel in two different ways because I definitely look at it in the Overwatch position, but I also look at it as like the the guy who's on the bus all the way to a scout who punches out to the right. Yeah, so so you're not just talking about military wise; you're also talking about uh, that guy. Well, it's like one of those things. Like, or, uh, I'll use an example. Um, and this is an example that I had in, uh, that happened to me in real life. I, I shouldn't say it didn't happen to me, but I observed it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, we were, I was in traffic, uh, right outside Washington, DC, um, rush hour traffic, right. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, well, right. um, it just Unbelly. doesn't doesn't move and you have a lot of issues with road rage shit right yes so this woman uh literally like a soccer mom with like a van full of kids um nervous as shit she had out of t so she was from uh she had like delaware or like pennsylvania right. plates i just remember them being right. uh blue and she just had no i didn't know her ass from a hole in the wall and ended up cutting somebody off right Right. Uh, this fucking guy, I couldn't believe it. This tool bag of a man decides that he's going to get out of his car and run up to her, you know, van and start pounding on the windows. Um, what? Yeah. With kids dude, in like the vehicle. A, yeah, exactly. Like what an asshole, right? <laughs> um, I can't. So, <laughs> So the guy, oh man, there was a guy. Uh, there are some shitbag people in this world. There so, really is. Yeah. So there was a guy that was actually in a vehicle behind that guy, right behind the the crazy asshole who had probably been watching him being an asshole to everyone around him for some time, flipping people off, this, that, and the other thing. Um, happens that the guy had a Marine Corps sticker on his truck. No. Said, yeah. Shocking. Mm. So, no, 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 not the asshole. <laughs> right, this right. Is the good guy. This is the 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 guardian right. angel. Oh no, it's getting good. Yeah, Continue. he gets out of his vehicle. Right. His it's vehicle. game time. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, he's here, like, here, here we go, here we go. Listen here, asshole. <laughs> he's like, says, you know, you can see him get out of his vehicle, and he yells to the guy, and immediately the guy turns. And starts marching back to the other guy, right? The guy that just yelled at him. And he's screaming. And you can hear him, fuck you, fuck you, you motherfucker. Mind your own fucking business, da-da-da-da-da. Then you hear the other guy can yell, 
hey, it's a woman and three children, you fucking loser. <laughs> right. And right. when as soon as he says that, the guy like breaks out into a run. Like it's like some breaking down shit. Remember that movie? Is that what that's called? That movie with Michael Douglas? Yes. What was that movie called? Yeah. Breaking no, no, no. Down? Uh that- it might be, yeah. I know Something. exactly what you're talking yeah. about. He's got the glasses stuff. and he's in LA and he's just yeah. like lost Homeboy his shit. <laughs> right. right? Um, so he comes running back at this other guy who then prepares, he jumps back in his vehicle, right? Right. And you see him lock the door because this guy's coming after him. He's like, I'm not going to get into a fight right in the middle of the thing. He starts banging on the fucking um, window of the truck, <laughs> right? And this guy's like, you better get the fuck away. You better, like, you can see him pointing at him and shit. So right. then this fucking idiot runs back to his car, pulls out a, uh, like a short bat. Right. Like, like a Louisville slugger. Bat this is all like, playing out in bumper to bumper gridlock traffic yes, in the middle of DC crazy. beltway. Pretty much crazy as shit. Right. You can see the other guy on his cell phone. So you know he's calling 911 or calling whatever, Oh, right? my gun's out by now, man. Listen, so <laughs> the guy brings the bat back, and all you see is a fucking 45 point right at the window across the guy's face. And then you see the guy with the bat go, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, like, shit got real. It's like it's, he snapped back into reality. <laughs> right? Um. And he's like, he's like, oh man, I, I'm sorry, I, you know, uh, like fucking so cliche. Oh my god, this, dude, he withers. Shit, you know, it's like Hollywood. This shit was really real. I I promise you. So that guy ends up going back to his car, right? And now he's trying to get off the highway. Of course, this he is. guy's behind him on a fucking cell phone. I don't know if the dude's on parole. What the fuck? But he's got issues. He's off the meds, I'll tell you that much. Right. So you see this guy on the phone. This guy's trying to get off to the shoulder. There's a, you know, uh, how trucks will block traffic every once in a while. Like, right. Right. To be, I I fucking hate it when they do it. But like a semi driver, like cut him off in the shoulder. And the next thing you know, literally a DC Metro cop pulls up two Mm -hmm. of them. And I and I guarantee it's because this guy, you know, called it in. That is fantastic. Oh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Not DC Metro, Virginia um, State Police. Nice. So, um, yeah, man. And uh, they even came over and questioned the guy with his. You could see it, that he had to show like his pistol license and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's right, an angel. Right. And that that's what we're talking about, folks, to an extent. Right. True story. Craziest shit ever. I was like, where this was before cell phones, like like really good cell phones. This is when there were still like Zoolander flip phones. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yes. Right. Right. This is before touch screen and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, It's like ninety nine, maybe two thousand ish. Right. You know, and I was in the army at the time, but I had been visiting my daughter down in North Carolina on leave, and I was on my way back up to, <laughs> to New York. So I was like, "Oh no, this is fucking crazy!" And I had stopped to see a buddy, um, uh, just south of DC. So I was just leaving his house at like ten in the morning. Yeah, yeah, fucking nuts. See, what's, anyway. What's- What's ironic and funny is that you cannot, there are times where you can conceal on base, but just because you have a concealed carry pistol doesn't, or a concealed carry, we call it a CCP permit because it's a concealed carry pistol permit here in North Carolina. But just because you have a concealed carry permit of any sort doesn't mean that you have the right to carry on base. And that's something that I, I I mean, me personally, I disagree with. Because there are other scenarios where you've got, oh, who is it? Like that Nathaniel Lewis guy mm-hmm. who was down, he was in North Carolina and it was him and his sons had basically, they've been stockpiling weapons and doing all sorts of stuff. And that's totally cool. You can stockpile as many weapons as you want. I don't give a shit. 
the when it got bad is when he had like plans of Quantico, the base. And like, okay, we're gonna go hit here, and then we're gonna go hit here, and uh, right. you've definitively crossed the line. Stockpiling weapons, go for it all day. Uh, do not have battle plans to come and attack United States Marines. You will die embarrassed. I'm gonna tell you that much right now. And he never even, I mean, he never even pulled the trigger on the plan because FBI I don't came know. in. We actually had a uh, Marine. A retired, I don't know if he was retired or had gotten out, and uh, he had gotten, he was working like contract work or something at the new plant that I was working at. Right. And we got a call from the state police, New York State Police, that he was inbound to our position, armed and dangerous. Nice. That he had gotten, because he had gotten fired. I'm standing out on the line. That's oh, yeah, me no, at the we, ready. So the, guy, <laughs> the guys, the guys out on the, um, out on the the gate, out on the, uh, like we have a gate that's pushed away out. Oh yeah, of course. Plane. And um, you know they're always locked in. You know we're always armed there, um, but they were. You know next thing you know they're slinging rifles and all kinds of shit because we have rifles out there, but right. we don't carry them around necessarily all the time. So, yeah, man. Yeah, That shit was crazy as fuck, too. But th- well, then he, he actually got pulled over before he got to us. Um, oh, really? I some New York State troopers. Yeah. So they were the fucking angel overwatch that fucking night. It's like put out a bolo shit, real quick. Real as fuck. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I don't. We have some stories. I have some stories about like guys blowing the checkpoint. I mean, there's there's like that's like legit shit. Um, like guys, a lot of it's, you know, you're paid for what you might have to do in right. that situation. You're not paid for, you know, the actual work that you do because shit, most of the time you're not doing shit. Right. Uh, you know, you are but, remaining uh, vigilant. Right. But when the shit goes down, it fucking goes down <laughs> <laughs> because it's a fucking uh, plant. I mean, right. it's you, a checkpoint. You've, you've it's had, an ECP. You've actually had, you've actually had, che- you've actually had new plants though, where, there's fucking people that like protesters and shit. Yeah. That will like, Oh climb. yeah. Dude. Are you the biggest dumbass in the planet oh, that you're yeah. fucking <laughs> climb the outer fence of a nuclear facility <laughs> to prove a point? You're uh... going to get smoked. You're going to get smoked. Um, not every step. Of course you're, you're <laughs> every state's different, but like New York state technically, as long as they're, uh, climbing that fence, supposedly you can smoke them. You know what I mean? But right. uh, I'm going to let you get I, inside. I, yeah, because I don't want to put that to the test. I'm going to let you, like you, those feet hit the grass. And maybe, you know, I cut fence and hit one of the hippies behind you. But your feet right. touch the grass. I'm going to smoke you. That's hard to mind. I don't know if I'm going to, even then, I don't know. It's one of those things. Really? Like, it's hard. Mm. Well, it's. It's difficult because in New York state law, of course, they had to leave it wishy-washy. Oh, of course. Yeah. You now, can if they, never... blow through the, if they blow through the fence, then smoke them. Right. But now... if, you know what I mean? It's it's one of those things like if they climb it. Um, yeah. Anyway. Well, and that's, that's the thing that is people have to remember that rules are things where you can't. Mm, no, 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 no. Rules should be an enabling thing, essentially. Yeah, and then you not, have not a restrictive thing, right? And then you have but, like, but well, you can't you you can't possibly sit down and say, "Do not do this, do not do this, do not." It, the list would be infinite. Yeah, and so you need to create enabling things, such yeah, as create law. a list of here's what you can do. Right. Don't focus on what you can't do, and that that's what I used to try to get guys do. And I know the training guys used to. You know, it's the same with police officers, and it's the same with them in the military right. too. Rules of engagement. Don't focus on what you can't do. You have to focus on what you can. And if you watch somebody, if you, you know, know what you, in, in a in a guardian angel type situation like with mike penny where he's strapped he's got to know you need to know the laws inside and out and that's that this is the problem that we run into with second amendment rights 
is that if there weren't idiots out there that literally didn't know what the fuck they were, you know, that didn't know what they were doing with the fucking gun and self-protection or protection of their community, and they just smoke a guy and he's got a squirt gun in his fucking hand, there's there there's a difference. You right. know what I mean? Um, and you're like, oh, I'd rather be what's the what's the fucking saying? Oh, I'd rather be judged by twelve than whatever by six or whatever the fuck, right. you know, six feet under or whatever. But well, and, right. And, and and then you're gonna smoke a kid and you're gonna go to jail. Right. And right. and so you and yes, it's not it's and the bottom line is that if you're not trained to make these decisions, you have no business out there doing it. Period. Well, it's funny because I, it's like I, the wild I will. West. I will concede. Name ain't wild. Your name's not wild, Wyatt Earp, bitch. <laughs> I will concede this. When when our Constitution was written, it was written for laws for white landowning males. And, of course. And so if you were those people, you got to keep and bear arms kind of a thing. Yes. Right? So I'll concede that fact. I believe in constitutional law, but I also believe in, in the education of it. And I yeah. think that it's important to understand where deadly force is justified. Christ, I wish, when I was a kid, I wish, looking back on it now, that I was taught, probably in freshman or sophomore year, that life, limb, eyesight, or rape, life, limb, eyesight, or rape are justifiable reasons for killing somebody. And that is to defend yourself against loss of life, limb, eyesight, or rape. But now you have shoot, don't shoot scenarios or attack, defend, whatever you want to call it scenarios to where it's like, okay, which one's the aggressor? What if she came after him, slashed him, now he's on top of her in order to subdue her and his pants aren't down? What do you got? Right. And you can do all of these different scenarios based upon those different things. But you've got to know who the aggressor is and who is rising to the aggression. And then you need to be able to escalate to the point of de-escalation. So shout, show, show, shoot. You've got to be able to present a pistol and say, I'm going to fucking kill you if you don't stop. Right. Or now that's in a rape scenario or something. If you feel that your life is in jeopardy at that moment in time and somebody is trying to kill you, then you need to understand that you're justified to be able to defend yourself and kill that person. That's totally mm-hmm. fine. You know, you're going to be fucked up mentally from it for a little while, but like, it's totally fine. Okay? Well, let me, let me also bring another, uh, and you, you know what? I don't care if this gives you pause or not, because it's something that you should take fucking seriously. Right. Mm-hmm. That carrying a, carrying a weapon is a fucking, an a enormous fucking responsibility. Okay. And on top of the laws, you have to also, the law could totally be in your favor. Right. Right. I can guarantee you though, you shoot somebody, whether it's in self-defense or whatever, Lawyer you up. will, <laughs> you will be sued period. You will be. I don't care if it's justifiable homicide or not. They will come after you, the person's family, more than likely. Or if you don't kill the person, lawyer up and freaking wait for the freaking lawsuit to come. Mm-hmm. Seriously. And you know I'm right. Well, and there's so many other factors, though, that don't deter me from carrying a firearm, but rather make me be more cognizant and aware of my surroundings. And that's like geometry of fire. You know, it depends on the round that you're carrying and the pistol that you're carrying and what your capabilities are as well. But don't forget about geometry of fire. Know your target and what lies beyond it. Because if you're carrying a full metal jacket, nine millimeter and you T box somebody and it goes through and tags a lady in the shoulder blade who is just trying to get a slurpee out of Hess station, you're fucked buddy. Yeah. Again, gigantic responsibility. So I get know your weapon and your freaking the capabilities of it before you fucking carry it. It was a damn good shot though. He T boxed him. I'm just saying. Yeah. Just saying I would but bring then, that to then, light. But then you, but then you smoke the freaking, <laughs> you know, middle, the middle school teacher getting a Slurpee. Damn. damn. Uh, and, and yeah, 
Good job. Well right. done, dumbass. Right. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, but it's one of those things is, you know, I, on occasion, I don't every single time, I'm not Michael J. Penny, but on occasion, when I feel like I need to carry a firearm, I do, and I am licensed to do so. Yeah. Well, I, I don't do it all the time. I just don't. And that's my personal choice because um, that's just how I am. And sometimes I don't fucking feel like taking that responsibility on myself. I don't feel like it's like I put on a different mask. It's like I put on a different face. Right. When, when I, when I do it and sometimes I just don't want to play. Yeah. You know, and that's my choice. Oh Um, yeah, absolutely. So not everybody needs to be guardian angel. But, no. but those of us who are need to be very proficient gunfighters if we're going to carry them. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it's like it's like the grandma who gets pulled over by a cop and says, hey, I see that you have a concealed carry, you know, permit or whatever. She's like, yeah. Do you have any guns? Yep. Bam, bam, bam. Starts pulling out like seven, eight, nine different weapons. Guy goes, what are you afraid of? She goes, not a goddamn thing. Yeah, exactly. That's one of the funniest things. I remember when I lived in North Carolina, I had uh, this. She was probably in her 80s um, and she would walk down to the market to the grocery store um, like three or four days a week. And she had actually been mugged um, because I didn't necessarily live in the best neighborhood. I couldn't afford it. So... um, she started carrying this 38 pistol right on her hip, open carry. <laughs> and that I used to laugh every time I'd watch her walk by, man. Right. I would just laugh. Freaking amazing. She had this like, you know, like those wire carts that, that you put like the people put groceries in or put shit in and then they wheel them along, you know, that yeah. she would, she would take that to the grocery store. And she would walk back, oh, you know, probably like three, four days a week. Um, right. And uh, didn't just carry the thirty-eight right on her freaking hip, man. Not very many. Nobody messed with her after that. Grandma, are you going to change your routine? Are you just are you going to go down there di- different ways? No. No, I'm just walking. I will arm myself. This is my neighborhood. I've lived here forty-five years. Goddamn straight. Hell this is yes. My fucking neighborhood. Those are my favorite people in the world. So armed yeah. grandmothers, they got all the experience. They do. Hell yeah. That shit was funny. <laughs> it was fantastic. The duck, the judge trying her is like 40 and right. she's 92. Like son. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh God. Yes. Well, be guardian angels, people. It's good. It's, it's all right to be a guardian angel. And, uh, and Guardian Angels, subscribe, rate, review the podcast, and be sure to share with other other Guardian Angels. So you should do that. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM. You can find us on YouTube. We're all over the place. We're doing a bunch of different stuff in the uh, the backside of Scars and Z stories, and we've been toiling away in the darkness. And thank mm. you for listening. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, thank you for being our Guardian Angels. Good Lord. Bennett, I love your body, man. (laughs) I'm glad you do. (laughs) I fucking hate it. (laughs) Uh, Thank you to all of our sponsors, Heroes Media Group, Spartan Media, uh, VeteransList.us. You can get 50% off using discount code CigarsNC. Thank you, folks, for listening. And on that note, we cue the music.